Welcome back, everyone. Now that we've had have a basic understanding of the city structures, let's dive deeper into the conditional statement. Uh, we'll look at more complex examples and explore how these structures can be used to build more sophisticated programs. So, conditional statements, the if statement. The if statement is the simplest form of a conditional statement. It allows you to execute a block of code only if a specific condition is true. For example, let's say you want to check uh, whether uh, is checking even or odd numbers. So we have an integer, which this number, we'll say it's four. We already know that's even uh, because four divided by two is, 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 has no render, so therefore it's even. Um, so we want to check to see if that number is divisible by two. Uh, if it's divisible, if it is divisible by two, that means that uh, when you divide it by two, you'll have a remainder. And remember, there's an operator that checks for the remainder. It's called the modulus. So we're going to take this number mod two to see if it equals zero. Notice here that we do double equals to test for equality. Uh, I know in the previous video we saw greater than or equal to. Less than or equal to will be a less than sign than equal to. Um, such as this. Um, and yeah. Okay. So uh, if the number mod 2 equals 0, then that number is even. Okay. Pretty straightforward. So 4 is even. Yay. Okay. Nothing comes out. So we don't have it saying anything. But it did check that condition and said, hey, is 5 mod 2 equal to 0? Oh, it's not. Okay, then we're not going to do anything. So, in this example, the condition number mod 2 equals equal 0 checks that the number is even. If true, then the message is printed. There could be times where you could check for multiple conditions. Okay. So, I don't know. If number mod three uh, is equal to zero, then it's going to say the number is equal to zero by three. Let's look at number six. So six, uh, so the number mod two equals zero. We know that that's already even. So that should get printed out. We're also checking this other condition. Okay, so six is divisible by three, so it should get both sixes printed. Six is even, and six is divisible by three. Uh, so this would check each condition and execute the code block whenever a condition is true. Okay, much different than the if else statement. Because the if else statement provides an alternative code block if the condition is uh, false. So if this first was true, then else this other one. Okay. Much different than that. So let's check to see if uh, someone passes a uh, checking if someone passes a test. Okay. Specific example. We'll look at this one. So we have a score, int score is 45, and if the score is greater than or equal to 50, then we'll say you pass the exam, else uh, you fail the exam, just this or the other way. Okay. Let's do this. Oh, I failed. Yes. So here the condition score is greater than or equal to 50 determines if the student passes or fails. The difference with if, if else rather than multiple ifs is that only one, only one, only one code block will get generated or executed. Only one. Multiple ifs, it's possible that 
All of them get executed. Lord, it's only the, only the ones where the condition is true, they'll get executed now. Okay? But with if else, only one gets executed. Similarly, with the if else if statements, um, the if else if ladder allows for multiple conditions to be checked sequentially. So let's say we wanted to assign grades. So we have a score of 85, like we felt similar before. Um, if the score is greater than or equal to 90, we want to grade it A. If this, uh, else if the score is greater than or equal to 80, then B receives B and F. Okay? Uh, so for all of the cases we have. Okay? So with this 85 here, we know that we should get to a B. But it is literally going in. Is 85 greater than or equal to 90? No. So go to the next one. Is 85 greater than or equal to 80? Yes. So I print grade or system not out print execute this code block. So system not out print line. So I'm printing in grade B. And then I'm done. I go through uh, those are all those. So I skip reading all of those. Okay. So in this example, the program checks multiple conditions to assign a grade based on the score. Again, only one of these, one of these, one of these, one of these code blocks will get executed. Be aware of this, as there are times when you would want to do multiple ifs with multiple code blocks based off conditions executed, instead of only one code block being executed. Now, you can also combine these together with nested conditional statements. You can also nest if statements within other if or else blocks to create more complex decision-making structures. So if you want to check multiple conditions, it the age is 25, and we're going to have a Boolean. So true, false. Let's see, has a license. Do they have a license? True. They don't have false. So if the age is greater than or equal to 18, then, if they have a license, you're not eligible to drive. Else, you need a driver's license to drive. But if they're not greater than or equal 18, you're saying you're too young to drive. And yes, I know. You drive the other way to go with the alert from Just an example. Calm down. I said you can't drive if you're under the age 18. Just an example. Yay, I'm 25, I'm eligible to drive. Because I have a license. Let's see what happens when I don't have a license. You need a driver's license to drive. Oh, okay, let's see what happens when I'm 10. I don't have a license. You're too young to drive. So that was when I was 16. And I do have a license. I still say you're too drive. In this example. So this is sample. We first check if the person is old enough to drive and then check if they have a license. Okay. So some things that will be very important while you're doing this are logical operators. Logical operators can be used to combine multiple conditions. Um, in a single if statement. Okay. So we're going to look at the logical operator for and. So to see if this is true and this is true. So it's only true if both conditions are true. So we're going to look at the logical operator or, which is true if at least one condition is true. So for and, both have to be true. Uh, so both the things you're comparing have to be true. For or, only one has to be true. And then none. So we have the opposite. So if it's true, then actually it's false. It's only true when the thing's false because you're saying not that. <laughs> so, um, let's try. Turn 20. Let's start off with. So, age is 20. Uh, another Boolean. This time is, is a student. So, if the person is greater than or equal to 18, and, so this is how you do and, So 
So as the person is an age is greater than equal to 18, and you are a student, that's going to say you're an adult student. Okay. So let's see what happens here. We got 20 uh, and true. So 20 and they are a student. They're an student. So let's change that to false. Still 20. But nothing happens because they're not also a student. Okay, let's change that to true. Uh, actually, let's see if false. This time, instead of and, let's do or. So if the age is greater than get equal to 18 or, I'm going to see it. We'll say you're an adult student. Because I was in a class in a good way, right? So they're an adult student. Just because only one of those is true, they're over 18. Happens now. Um, but what if we wanted to say not this? So I just made it not by putting that in front. So if the whole thing's false, then it's going to come out to be true. This is going to give us uh, 16. It's not greater than 18, so this is false. And this is also false. False or false is still false. Um, and then we're saying not that. So here the message is printed only if both conditions um, were true uh, when we had the end. Uh, we saw what or did, and we saw what not did. By now, you should have a deeper understanding of conditional statements and how they can be used to control the flow of your programs. Um, these examples show you just a few ways to implement the state structures, but the possibilities are endless. Keep practicing, and you'll find these tools invaluable for writing more complex and interactive programs. Happy coding, everyone. Uh, if you all understand, take a shot of espresso with me. Else? Watch again until you take, until you do, and take a special shot with me. Sorry for getting a little loopy. What's your call? Bon appetit.